So as I mentioned, one of the components about creating a responsive website and dealing with typography is ensuring that your letting or line height is consistent and uniform. In order to do this, you're going to have to set up a baseline grid. So when we talk about typography, what is a baseline grid exactly? Well, a baseline grid is defined as typography and penmanship. The baseline is the line upon which most letters sit and below which descenders extend. So the basic premise behind a baseline grid is to align all text on a website so that it flows smoothly. A baseline is going to ensure appropriate letting, which is line height, and this is invaluable to any layout that uses columns. If we look at these two pages right here, this is a page that is not utilizing a baseline grid. You can see that I have a callout area that has a poem that appears over here. And if we look at the lines of text, and if I drop a ruler right here, you can see that there isn't really any rhyme or reason as to where the text is sitting. This creates an end design that is not comfortable for the user to read. If we compare it to this design, which is the exact same page that has some formatting assigned to it, there is more uniformity and alignment, and the page looks easier to read, very approachable, and is ultimately a better experience for the end user. So when you're creating a responsive baseline, you want to build it using M's or REMs. The first step that you need to do is to set a default font size on the body element or the HTML element to ensure that all browsers are going to render the fonts consistently. We're going to take this basic page right here and we're going to set a baseline grid for it. If we look at the HTML, what we have to start off with is a series of H1, paragraph, there's an H3 and an H2 tag and multiple paragraphs. So we'll just be using this very simple example in order to set a baseline grid. The first step that I'm going to do is I'm going to set the HTML tag to have a font size of 100%. By setting the HTML elements font size to 100%, it's just ensuring that all browsers will render the fonts consistently. The setting of 100% will result in browsers rendering a font that is equal to their default font size. In most browsers, that happens to be 16 pixels. However, there are other devices that have different default font sizes. Because they're high density displays, they may have a higher default font size. If you look at the devices side by side, the font size is going to look similar to 16 pixel pixels, but ultimately it could be 24 pixels or 26 pixels or something else altogether. For our purposes in this example, we are going to assume a base font size of 16 pixels. Then we're going to create a typographic scale based on this value. I am going to define font sizes for our typographic elements. I like to use the following scale. 16, 18, 21, 24, 36, and 48. So let's go ahead and think about how this would affect the elements on our page. We're going to begin by creating rules for H1, H2, and H3. And I'm setting the H1 font size to 3Ms. How I got 3Ms is I took our base font size of 16 pixels and I divided it by the target size that I wanted the H1s to display at. I wanted my H1s to display at 48 pixels. So if I divide 48 into 16, I get 3. This is how I get the results for the remaining values that I have here. My H2s will display at 36 pixels, or 2.25 Ms, and the H3s will display at 24 pixels, or 1.5 Ms. And then for the paragraphs, we're simply going to set the font size on those to 1 M. So we want the paragraphs to actually display at their default size of 16 pixels. If we save our page and refresh in the browser, you can now see that that formatting has started to occur within the page. As you know, an M is a relative unit. 1 M is 1 times the current font size and 3 M's is 3 times the current font size. So to convert our typographic scale to M's, we're using the simple formula that we've discussed before target font size divided by current font size and that's going to give us our results. So if I wanted to have an H1 display at 32 pixels then I would divide 32 by 16 and it would give me a result of 2 M's. 
as I go through and document this I always like to put the math that I use to get the value and that way later on if I'm not quite sure where the number came from I can always refer to the comments so now that we have our typographic scale in M's we need to set appropriate line height it is the line height along with the bottom margin of our elements that's going to uniformly align our different typographic elements and create our baseline the general rule of thumb for readable text is that your line height should be 1.4 to 1.5 times that of your font size in this example I'm going to use one and a half it's an easy number to work with and I don't mind giving my text a little bit of extra breathing room so given that our base font size is 16 pixels our line height is going to be 24 pixels I'm getting 24 pixels by multiplying 16 by one and a half so we're going to use the same formula that we used before so that we can get a line height when we code line height though our target size has now changed I'm dividing target line height that's 48 pixels by the current font size my current font size is also 48 pixels that gives me a result of 1 M so my line height for my h1 is going to be 1 M if we move on to the h2 my target lines height for h2 is also going to be 48 pixels so if I divide 48 by 36 I get this number right here notice how this number is not a pretty number I'm adding in all the additional extra three 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 threes because the browser can handle that sort of math for the h3 we're going to reduce our line height to 24 so again I'm just using 24 divided by 24 which is going to give me 1 M and then for paragraphs we're going to use a line height of 24 as well so if I divide 24 by 16 I get a result of 1.5 M's if we save now and we refresh in our browser you can see what the subtle changes to the spacing has done in this particular example I chose to double the line height for h1 and h2 as the font size is larger the rest of the elements on my page will have a line height of 24 the only thing left to do now is to add some spacing to each of the elements I like to use the value of line height for my margin bottom that way the vertical rhythm looks nice and uniform so with that in mind I'm going to add margin bottom to my elements for the h1 I'm going to be using a margin bottom of 24 pixels that's going to give me a resulting value of 0.5 m's for my h2 I'm also going to be using 24 pixels but because my target is 36 the number is going to be different for the h3 I'm going to use 24 and that's just going to give me a margin bottom of 1 M and finally for my paragraphs I'll use 24 which is going to give me a margin of one and a half now if I save and refresh in the browser you can see there's subtle adjustments this is a great foundation for beautiful typography it can be a challenge to work with M's but when you well code and think it out then you're going to end up with a site that is responsive and that will work well under a variety of circumstances we also have the benefit if we want to make a quick change to the font size globally all I have to do is change the HTML tag if I make this 120 percent and save and refresh now everything is going to scale accordingly but I'm still keeping my same typographic foundation the same scale that we were using before and everything still looks great